Tanya Javi has been coaching Roadrunners women's basketball for more than a decade. Two down for Candace. Now compete, compete, compete. Let's go, let's go. All right. She is the program's all-time leader in wins. But those wins don't start on the court. They start in conversations with potential recruits before they even commit to MSU Denver. Coach Jave promotes her WTF method that continues to keep her program among the top teams in the conference. The tree-based system sprouted its first buds in the spring of 2015. And after five seasons of growth and evolution, it has blossomed into three main core values in work, trust, and family. The two first two words that come to, uh, that come to my mind when we do this are the intentionality, intentionality of what you're doing, so focusing on what you're doing so you don't have to spend all day there, being intentional about what you're doing, and then the continuous improvement, kind of the growth mindset of you always want to get better. Um, we're talking about practice. Hey, did we get better today? Did you get better today? Uh, it may be, hey, I'm going to meet every pass or I'm going to jump to every ball but did you get better today? And it's that growth mindset. Or if you make a mistake, you want to really encourage people. You don't want to have a ton of mistakes, but you don't want to see they have them so uptight that they can't make mistakes. So, okay, you made that mistake. So what did you learn from it? And how are you going to fix it? What are you going to do? So it's always that growth mindset of, yeah, you'll make mistakes, but okay, I can learn from it. It's okay to make a mistake. The continuous improvement more goes towards the, the growth mindset. So, and then, the next layer of that would be, you know, like I said, you can come in and work hard, but are you thinking, you know, we might work hard, yeah, I can run fast. Are you focusing on the drill? Are you doing the correct, are you doing the drill correctly? Are you not messing up the drill? So you got the physical work, the mental work, and then the emotional work. You know, and the emotional work, the big thing with the emotional work would be, um, are you engaged? Do you really want to be there? Are you, are you present in the moment, you know? Again, are you just running around with, like a chicken with your head cut out? So you're doing the physical cut off. Well, you're doing the physical work, but are you engaged? Are you talking? Are you things like that? So those are the first two layers of, of the work piece. Well, for us, you know, it's the respect, the reliability, and huge, huge, huge is communication. I don't think you're gonna build trust without being able to communicate. And sometimes that involves some conflict management. Um, I also think the communication along with that is you gotta have some mutual respect in order to develop trust. And that, that's gonna involve the communication, listening, uh, you know, empathy, you know, uh, being able to put yourself in the other person's shoes. And I think we, we do that fairly well. I think I do that fairly well. I, it was a long time ago that I was a player, but I still think I remember what it was like to be a freshman and to know how hard it was and to try and put myself in their shoes. And so many times players, all they want to do is they want you to listen. And so if they have something, well, okay. If they know that you've heard them, I think that's really important. And that goes to communication. That will help build that trust. Uh, the reliability factor is like, well, being accountable. You're in this program, accountable for what you're doing on the floor, off the floor, and do what you say you're going to do. Don't say, okay, I'm going to, I'll be here at X time and then not show up. I mean, do what you say you're going to do. I said, I will, I start off trusting you until you demonstrate to me or your behavior tells me that I can't. Um, I think that's harder on the other side, that, that trust. So I'm always building, trying to build that trust. You can build it, build it, build it. And I'm very, very leery that I know it can be lost in a heartbeat. You know, they come here, I mean, during the season, we end up spending more time with our assistants and our players and our, our families. So it does become your uh, second family. Um, gosh, the family is just people that you spend a lot of time with, that you're close with, you're gonna go through ups and downs with, 
you're, you're trying to do something that's bigger than yourself, especially with their MSU Denver family. But then incorporated into that is, just, is the trust factor. You know, family, you're gonna trust your family. They're gonna have your family, you have each other's back. You know, you can go through anything with them. You can tell them anything. Um, those are the things that, that family kind of means, means to me that you'll do anything for. You'll sacrifice. We talk a lot about sacrifice. You know. We also want to have a little fun, you know, all those, all those things. Um, because we do, <laughs> you know, during the season, you spend more time with your basketball family than your, than your real family. Part of the levels of the family, one of it is in investment. If you're not in, quote unquote, in, you're not investing and you got to invest in a family. You have to invest in the family is all about relationships. And so you have to invest in those relationships, whether it be your real family or your, your uh, MSU Denver family or your team family. But those that do, that buy in and give in and, you know, they're the selfless sacrifice, invest, you know, invest not only in themselves, but invest in their program. They see the, the fruits of, of the, that investment. Mm -hmm.